What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another Money and Toys video. Today we are reviewing AEW Double or Nothing, man. We are taking it back and reviewing this show that just took place a few hours back. And what a show it was. And today, or tonight, whenever you're watching this, we're going to be running through the entire AEW Double or Nothing car, breaking down all the action, letting you guys know exactly what took place, let you guys know my thoughts on it, all of the things in between, let you know if it was a good show, a bad show, or somewhere in between. I was looking forward to this show. I was very hyped for all of the matches. Couldn't wait to get started. So that being said, let's shut the hell up and dive into AEW Double or Nothing and break down all the action that took place. Alright man, so kicking things off with the 21-man Blackjack Battle Royal for the AEW International Championship. Orange Cassidy defending against a slew of people. I don't know why they got rid of the Casino Battle Royal or whatever the hell they called it. I honestly preferred the old way they did the Battle Royal, but I guess they wanted something new here. But no surprises or shocks in this thing. You had a pretty solid field, but this matchup was pretty solid overall. You know, the great there was a great final two between Swerve Strickland and Orange Cassidy. But the final four were Big Cass, Penta Swerve, and Orange Cassidy. To me, it looked like Brian Cage wasn't even really like trying in this matchup it was very odd but he ended up eliminating Keith Lee Jay White was eliminated by Ricky Starks Ricky Stark was then eliminated by Big Cass Dustin Rhodes eliminated Brian Cage with a Canadian Destroyer on the apron and then Swerve eliminated Dustin Rhodes and then Orange retained by last eliminating Swerve and the last two Orange and Swerve put on a damn banger man I think they need to have a standalone match by themselves I'm sure that's coming down the line but this was a very enjoyable match very fun a little sloppy at times but I thought the field got it done overall it was an enjoyable match it was a fun ride, you know, Battle Royal, kind of tough to book, you know, you know, like, they're not, uh, I think they can be great, I think they can be fun, this one was fun, I just think that it was a little bit sloppy at times, but Orange Cassidy retains, I'm all for that, love Orange Cassidy, big tip to the cap, I'm glad he's still champion, that's all I can say about this one, but it was a fun way to open up the main show. Next up, we had the matchup that was probably the most looking forward to, or at least, uh, it was probably a top three match I was looking forward to, Adam Cole, one of my favorite wrestlers in the world, Chris Jericho, one of my favorites of all time, going to war here, you know, I think this matchup probably happened too late in Chris Jericho's career. It's not that he's bad or anything. It's just, I just feel like his matches kind of drag. And this one was no different, man. It just felt a little draggy. There were some cool spots in here. You know, we had some good stuff. Also, Sabu was the special enforcer for this match, but he didn't do a damn thing. I think he was just here for clicks or just to, because it was unsanctioned. And this match did not need to be unsanctioned, man. The last like two or three matches were much worse in terms of brutality compared to this one, but the Appreciation Society came out there. Sabu and Cole fought, fought off Jericho's goon. Sabu was cracking me up though, man. He was like pump faking the chair and taking bumps. Like he, he was in his own world out there. He did a freaking splash through the table. It was like every time Sabu did something, he would like point to the sky and do his little taunt. It was like he was playing Here Comes a Pain or something. He was like doing a wrestling move and putting his opponent down and then he would do his taunt to build up some special so he could get a finishing move. But he chased off Jericho's goons and Daniel Garcia. Out came the fire extinguisher. About that time out came Britt Baker. So Britt Baker came out got her revenge on, on Chris Jericho beating the slew out of him with a kendo stick. Then Soraya comes out there. Britt Baker beats her up and chases her off. Jericho throws a chair into Adam Cole's head and it knocked him off the turnbuckle and he fell through a table on the outside. I thought that was interesting. And then Cole and Jericho battled it out with this chain that they had. Jericho choked him with it and then finally Adam Cole got the upper hand. Hit him with a chain. Hit him with a Panama Sunrise that looked awful. It's not a good looking Panama Sunrise. Boom knee shot with the chain and then hammer fisted him to death till he was unconscious for the W. This matchup was not horrific but it I definitely expected more out of it. Like, I, I'm to the belief that Adam Cole is incapable of having a bad match, but this one drug by, man. It, it was, it just didn't hit like I thought it would, man. So, that's all I can say about it, but Adam Cole did win, which I was grateful for. I was happy to see that, but yeah, I, I don't know, man. This one just wasn't it. Next up, guys, we had FTR taking on Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal for the AEW World Tag Team Championships with Mark Briscoe as the special guest referee. It was a fun match, you know. It was a little slow at times. I hate I don't have a Jay Lethal or Jeff Jarrett to put on screen, but there were some fun shenanigans at the end. That's kind of what it came down to. It's like a, it was like a regular matchup. I didn't find anything overly crazy in this matchup, but when you have FTR in there, you get some good stuff in there, and it was fun to see Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett back in a tag team matchup like this. I I found that fun, so the end of the matchup was re really where the fun kicked off. You had some shenanigans with two referee bumps with the guitars, so both Mark Briscoe and Aubrey Edwards taking a guitar shot to the face before Briscoe wakes up. I think he shoved Jeff Jarrett or, or like hit him in the face with a forearm smash. 
Smash. And then that led into the Shatter Machine from FTR for the W, where they retained their tag titles. You know, I expected that. I thought it was a solid matchup. Nothing like, again, just ridiculously fantastic. But it was a fun, enjoyable matchup, and I had some fun with some moments in it. And sometimes that's all it takes, but FTR do get the W. Next up was our ladder matchup for the AEW TNT Championship. Had my boy Wardlow out there. I'm a big Wardlow guy, man. Love me some Wardlow. But I thought this was a solid overall ladder match. I had some fun with it again. Enjoyed it. You had some Luchasaurus and Arn Anderson involvement, so I'll go ahead and get Luchasaurus in there. We need an updated figure of this guy, man. I know we have like a black version of it with the T, you know, the Amazon 2-pack with Jungle Boy, but still, we need that black and red. Nonetheless, these guys go back and forth. We had some battles on some ladders, some ladder bumps here and there. At one point, Wardlow jumped off the turnbuckle onto the ladder. I think he was trying to land on the ladder, but he landed awkwardly and it snapped the leg of the ladder, and then both men fell off. It was a very scary spot to the point where the whole crowd was chanting holy shit, so he got holy shit chants. Luchasaurus then chokeslam Wardlow. Arn Anderson comes in and bites Luchasaurus's thumb, and it must have been a blood packet or something. It was blood everywhere. It was on Arn Anderson's face and his head, and Luchasaurus's thumb was covered in blood. If he really bit his thumb that hard, like, holy shit, that would be insane, but Wardlow battled Lucha to the outside, puts this man on two tables, and like, Jeff Hardy, Wardlow bails off the damn, like, 20-foot ladder through Luchasaurus through two tables. He looked like prime Jeff Hardy out there. Absolutely ridiculous spot. Maybe the spot of the night. But then Arn Anderson, while he was down from that, while Wardlow's down from that chaos, Christian is reaching for the belt. Arn Anderson tips the ladder over, knocking Christian into Wardlow by this point, and Wardlow catches him in a powerbomb, slams the shish out of him, and wins the ladder match. Damn good game, you know, it was a fun little matchup. The just wild ride. I did not expect Wardlow to do a damn swanton bomb off a ladder through two tables. It legitimately looked like WrestleMania 17 out there. It was absolutely insanity, but just another reason to love Wardlow, man. Gotta love Wardlow. He retains the TNT title. I'm enjoying Wardlow. You know, I think he's cooled off a lot since he first, you know, broke away from MJF, but God, man, he's a future world champion. I love that guy. Good win right here. Next up was our AEW Women's Championship between Tony Storm with Soraya and Ruby Soho taking on Jamie Hayter. Now, my Tony Storm basic can't remember where the hell that went. You know, I, I, I don't know. I gotta track that one down. We do have a figure coming soon from AEW, but it's gonna be in the pipeline for a while. Nonetheless, Jamie Hayter pretty much got her A beat during her entrance, so Tony Storm comes out, and then Jamie Hayter's taking forever in her entrance. This is a Ray and Ruby Soho are beating the hell out of her. Apparently, she actually is battling a realistic injury in real life, so I guess she really couldn't compete in a full-fledged matchup. So basically what this was is Soraya and Ruby Soho beat the hell out of Jamie Hayter so much that she couldn't really continue, and Tony Storm beat her in like four minutes or something like that. It was, it was, it was kind of a nothing match, but we do have a new world champion. Tony Storm is the new AEW Women's World Champion. Interested to see where this faction goes from here and how that all lays out, but... Looks like Jamie Hayter may be on the shelf for a while, if that's true. Wish her a speedy recovery, but her reign is now over. Next up, we have the House of Black taking on the acclaimed in an open house rules six-man tag team match for the AEW World Trios Championships. And this was a solid matchup, you know. I thought everybody popped really hard when the acclaimed came out. Really waiting on their figures as well, and the Brody King. Can't wait to get those, but this was a solid little matchup. You know, both teams are really fun, so, I mean, you know what you're getting yourselves into here. Great back and forth. The pinfall actually came with a black. Black Mass to Billy Gunn, of all people, who took the pinfall, which I guess is good, but the House of Black do win in a great back-and-forth matchup. I was also putting my son to sleep around this time, so it was tough to, like, go in and out, but I kept it I kept it on. We, we watched it on the couch while he was going to sleep, and so I tried my best to keep up with everything there. But House of Black won, and uh, that's all I could say. I think I, this was a fun matchup, though. When you have those six guys in the ring, I mean, Billy Gunn didn't do a whole lot, but you get the point. Next up was the TBS Championship match between Jade Cargill, 59-0, entering this matchup, and you're looking at Chris Statlander because it was a, it was initially Taya Valkyrie. Well, Jay Cargill beat her in about eight minutes or so. And then after that, Mark Sterling gets on the mic and has an open challenge saying nobody's left. And then out comes the return of Chris Statlander to defeat Jade in under a minute to end the undefeated reigning Goldberg-like streak and TBS championship reign of Jade. And I have I loved Chris Statlander. I think she's fantastic. To see her back is a huge deal, I think, for AEW in the women's division. So this was huge for me. I enjoyed this. I was very happy to see her there. She looked great, and she came out and beat the hell out of Jade and won the thing, so that, that's all happy for me, and I'm glad to see Jade's reign come to an end, you know? I think it's to the hands of a good, up-and-coming, great female wrestler for AEW, and I'm, I'm, I support that 100%. You know, Jade's ran, run has kind of gotten stale a little bit there, but I like Jade a lot. I just think she's still really green, but she has gotten a whole lot better, but Chris Statlander is your new TBS champion. Next up was probably match of the night, man. The Fatal 4-Way for the AEW World Championship. They 
They battled for almost 30 minutes, man. MJF defends against Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, and Jungle Boy Jack Perry. This matchup was off the GD rails, son. This might be the best Fatal 4-Way match of all time. It's absolutely in the conversation. This matchup ruled in every single way. It had every single thing that you could want, and I could honestly say this is probably one of the, if not the most important match in AEW history. I mean, you have four of the founding members that are going to carry this company for the next 15 to 20 years, and these four guys tore the damn house down, son. I mean, it reminded me of NXT Black and Gold, you know, just that classic drama, near falls, athleticism, crazy spots, like just intensity. If you love professional wrestling, if you call yourself a professional wrestling fan, you turn this match on, you cannot help but love this match. I mean, it's that damn good, man. One of my favorite matches of the year by far, it's probably gonna end up in the top three, possibly my favorite match of the year. It, it was so good. It was so, so good. And if you missed it, you definitely have to go check this one out. Ton of fun. Absolute roller coaster. All four men intertwining. And the ending was beautifully booked. The sequences. I mean, dude, it was like just perfectly done. I, I honestly don't think I could change a single thing. They did a fantastic job. Just a standing ovation and just a tip of the cap to everybody involved in this one. Absolute barn burning classic. That's enough I could say about it. If this doesn't end up with five stars, it's it's got to be close, man. So, so good. However, MJF retains, and the ending sequence was so good, man. It was so, so good. I can't remember. I want to say it was Jungle Boy and Darby Allen going at it. And Darby Allen, I can't remember exactly what he did, but he, he got Jungle Boy flat on the pavement, went for the coffin drop, and MJF slid out of nowhere, tossed the championship onto Jungle Boy. So when Darby Allen hit the coffin drop, it like hit him in the back of the head and back and kind of like stunned him. So that took out Jungle Boy, and then MJF like hooked his neck like he's been doing, and then hooked the leg for the 1-2-3. It was just absolutely brilliant, man. This matchup was fantastic. Just go watch it. It was so damn good. MJF wins. That's all I need to say. Got it. You gotta go find this somewhere. And for the main event, man, we had the Anarchy in the Arena, the Elite taking on the Blackpool Combat Club, and what a damn train wreck this was, man. Very fun matchup. A little bit brawly at times. You know, it was just a bunch of brawling at first. The band that played the opening song kept the tradition of live of keeping the music going after the brawl initiated and then the bucks ended up going up on stage and super kicking the lead singer and that was insanity and then i mean it was just chaos man i mean it was just absolute chaos tons of crazy spots backs and forth uh kenny omega had a sick ass like captain america canadian inspired white gear on that about make me knock out of my chair the Young Bucks had some sick-ass, like, slot machine elite gear on that was sick as hell. And they were rocking some J's. I mean, you had the exploding super kick. You had them battling all over the arena. It truly was anarchy in the arena, man. Matt Jackson stepped barefoot on tax. Mouthful of tax and then super kick to his face or the uppercut to the face. Tons of near falls. All these men beat the hell out of each other. Really waiting on our Wheeler Yuta figure. We got two of those coming. Excited for that. If you guys missed my AEW Jazz Wears Fan Fest figure reveal coverage, Definitely go check that out. Posted that this afternoon, so it should be up and ready for you. But holy hell, this matchup was a ton of fun. It was everything you love about wrestling, man. I mean, it was a bit of a, you know, car crash. You had screwdrivers, guys bleeding and not bleeding. Bit inconsistent there, but freaking end of the matchup, man. The Elite are about to bring this thing home, and then Don Callis gets in the ring, and Takeshita comes out, and he's masked up, and you can't see who it is, and he hits Kenny Omega in the skull with a screwdriver, and then Wheeler Yuta finishes him off and pins Kenny Omega for the Blackpool Combat Club to win. Win. So it looks like Takeshita has entered into and become a part of the Blackpool Combat Club, which makes me sick. That really took the air out of it for me. I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was hoping Abushi would come out and even the odds for the Elite. But apparently Kenny Omega cut a promo after the show and said that he had two friends not in AEW about to come help him out. So we'll see what comes of that. But damn, man, what a freaking insane show overall. I had a ton of fun with it. This matchup was fun. I mean, there was so many good matches. It wasn't the best AEW show of all time or like the greatest thing ever, but it was still really, really fun. There was there's a lot of enjoyable moments here, and you cannot discount that. It was so fun. But the BCC do defeat the Elite here. Didn't see that coming, man. I expected something else to happen here, but Takeshita cost them, and we will see how this thing unfolds. But I had a ton of fun watching the show, enjoying the show. I hope you guys enjoyed the review. I'd love to know what you guys thought of the show overall, if you guys checked it out. If you didn't, definitely go check out the matches that I mentioned. That is going to wrap up our AEW Double or Nothing show review. I had a lot of fun with the show. Wasn't the best AEW show ever, but I had a lot of fun with it. 
there was some crazy ass stuff that you need to go check out if you missed it. I enjoyed it overall, but that's going to wrap it up, man. Huge shout out to our patrons of the MDT YouTube channel. Always appreciate those guys. If you guys are interested in becoming patron members, definitely go check it out. Link in the description below. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'm getting out of here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you next time. We'll never back.